is high level climate action champion. I, I assume you're thrilled about this, Nigel. Hi, Joan. Yeah, I think it's I think it's great news. I think I mean it's good for UK soft power in the world, but I think it's also great for the the actual international process. You know, the UK still holds the presidency of the conference. I'll hand it over to Egypt on the first day. So it's great that the Prime Minister's decided to go. What do you think is behind his change of heart? Well, I think that um, it's a big voter issue. Um, and it's a big opportunity for the Prime Minister to meet many of the world leaders, as you've been saying, and to um, project British leadership. You know, the UK has done a great job as presidency with Alok Sharma, um, and the UK has got a great record on actually putting in place the actions to um, decouple economic growth from, uh, from, from carbon emissions. So I think, uh, I think it's a sort of little bit of an outbreak of common sense, maybe, that both in terms of future electoral uh, messages to, to, to voters and in terms of Britain standing in the world it's the right thing to do. Okay and um, so in terms of what can be achieved here this is, it is a bit different to Glasgow isn't it my understanding is that, that you have sort of one big one that they push through a whole load of new stuff and then the next one is, is, is more sort of tying up the loose ends getting through getting through it on the paperwork why is that important to have the Prime Minister at, at that kind of event? Well Actually, one thing which Glasgow changed, it changed that kind of five-year cycle to be much more about every year we've got to ratchet up ambition. You know, Glasgow injected a lot more urgency into the process. Um, so I said this is the sign-off of the UK's presidency. But also importantly, it's a time where we need to show a lot more solidarity with the vulnerable countries and communities in the world. And that's both in, the, in emerging markets in the global south, so this is an African cop on African soil, but also um, you know, the cost of living crisis and driven by very high fossil fuel energy prices. This is not just um, a paperwork cop. This is very much about driving forward action on the ground in real economies um, to bring down the cost of living um, by, by investing more in renewables. And, and, and so will, what difference do you think the Prime Minister's presence actually there on the ground will, will therefore make? I think he'll buoy, he'll buoy the process because the Egyptians, as, as, the, as the incoming presence, will be delighted to have that kind of that, 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 that physical presence of the, of, the, of the head of government and the head of the, the country with the presidency. Um, and it will just emphasise that this is a leadership issue um, a, across the board. And that injection of, um, of ambition and leadership at the beginning of a COP is really important for setting the, the mood music, if you like, for the negotiations for the two weeks that follow. Mm. I and in terms of, of, of the kind of promises that we're seeing from COP, if we look back, you know, back in time to things like the Paris Accord, what they'd set out in terms of global warming were, were much more stringent than, than what it looks like we're, we're really going to achieve. Do, do you feel hopeful that, that, that this next COP really will achieve something that makes a real difference? Or, or, or are you feeling a little despondent about what is really being achieved on a global scale? I think you always have to be a bit despairing and, and, and hopeful. We're not making enough progress. That's very, very clear in terms of mitigation, in terms of resilience, in terms of finance. But we are seeing um, more progress and it's speeding up. If you look at the transition to electric vehicles, for example, that's now just a, a race. You know, in, in India and China, the percentage of electric vehicles is doubling every year. So bits of the transition are starting to really take off. The key is to make sure that it's every bit of the transition in every part of the world. And just, just, just one slight correction, there's more ambitious, more ambition in the Glasgow Pact than there was in Paris. Remember, Paris said um, well below two degrees, best efforts to keep 1.5 alive. In Glasgow, everybody agreed we really need to aim for 1.5. So there's more ambition and more urgency in the whole process now. But, but I guess with the ambition and the urgency, it's, it's whether or not it can be achieved that's key, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a big focus on Egypt will be about turning those promises into action and really inviting everybody who turns up countries, CEOs, banks, cities to demonstrate that what they promised they are implementing. So that's what everyone's looking for. Nigel Topping, uh, good to talk to you, UK Government High Level Climate Action Champion for COP26. Thanks a lot. Thank you.